when discussing six-cylinder engines, only a few V6 models are typically mentioned, while the list of the greatest six-spot engines of all time is dominated by straight units. If a more compact shape were not a requirement, there would be no compelling reason to choose a V6 over a straight six engine. In fact, the inline six was the first six cylinder ever to be produced, and even the boxer came sooner than the V6. A newer is not always better, and luxury car manufacturers such as Jaguar, Mercedes Benz, and recently Mazda, returning to the inline six engine, illustrates its enduring appeal. The inline six engine is characterized by a simple design consisting of a single row of cylinders. While the length of its main components can pose challenges in certain applications and torsional rigidity can be problematic, the straight six layout remains highly desired for its superior engine balance. As the engine size increases, its balance only improves, with the straight six achieving near perfect primary and secondary balance. Its simplicity in design also contributes to its overall glamour. Ford has been a proponent of the inline six engine since the early 20th century, with several decades of success in producing them. The Ford Bearer was the most recent iteration and is particularly beloved by Australians, while Americans frequently reference the venerable Ford 240 and 300. The reason for their popularity are simple reliability and torque. It's no wonder that Ford continued production of these engines for over 30 years with few major modifications. Firstly, both the 240 and 300 engines were designed to meet a wide variety of applications to a certain standard. While heavy-duty variants were constructed using tougher materials and components, the basic architecture remained mostly unchanged through the engine's lifespan. This includes a cast iron engine block, cast iron overhead valve head, three-ring aluminum pistons, forged connecting rods, hydraulic lifters, a single carburetor, and gear-driven four-bearing camshaft. The gear materials differed depending on the specific model, but we'll get into that later in the video. A notable feature of this Ford engine is the non-crossflow head, with both the intake and exhaust located on the same side. Production of the 240 and 300 began in 1965 and continued nearly up to the end of the century. While the engines used the same engine block and head, it's the details that set them apart. The bore diameter is the same at 101.6 mm, but there are two different crankshaft strokes, 80.77 mm for the 3.9 liter and 101.09 mm for the 4.9 liter. This means that the rotating assembly, which consists of the crankshaft and the connecting rods, varied between the two engines. The 240 was offered for less than a decade, being built up to 1972 for full-size cars and 1974 for trucks and vans. This variant, dubbed the CSG 639, was designed for stationary service fueled by natural or petrol and gas. With a gross power rating of 150 horsepower for automotive use, the 240 was eventually phased out, leaving its larger sibling as the sole member of the lineup by the middle of the 1970s. As previously mentioned, the 300 had a different bottom end than the 240, and although the engines shared the same ball pattern and other components, the engine head of the 4.9 liter utilized a different combustion chamber shape and volume. The D-shaped combustion chamber had a size of 78 cc, while the 240's kidney-shaped chamber was of a smaller volume, measuring 68 cc. This would increase the compression ratio of the 300 by approximately 0.5, necessitating the use of high-octane fuel to prevent detonation. It's important to note that this also applies to an EFI head, which is compatible with the carbureted 300, 
that would raise the compression ratio as well. During the oil crisis of the 1970s, the power output of the 300 was affected and the conversion from the gross to net rating in 1972 further reduced its numbers. The engine was initially produced with 177 horsepower at 3800 rpm, but in 1973 the power dropped to 101 horsepower at 3000 rpm due to the new net rating while being manufactured with a lower compression ratio of 8 to 1 compared to the original 8.9 to 1. Despite some improvements made by engineers in the 1970s and early 1980s, with the maximum power reaching 120 horsepower, the 300 strength lies in its torque. Most of the torque is available at a low 1600 rpm, similar to that of a diesel engine. This low end torque allows the engine to perform well without having to run at high speeds, reducing strain and fuel consumption. It's worth noting that the 300 engine was used in a wide range of applications, from full-size cars and trucks to airline trucks, tractors, oil well pumps, generators, portable sawmills, irrigation pumps, wood chippers, snow plows, and even old UPS delivery trucks. This engine was more convenient for delivery services, as it could pull heavy loads like a diesel engine, but was more suitable for cold weather and could be turned on and off frequently without any issues. The industrial iterations of the Ford 300 engine, specifically the CSG649i, were engineered to withstand greater loads than their standard counterparts. While forged crankshafts were reportedly used in early iterations, they were later deemed unnecessary and replaced with cast iron pieces that were still incredibly durable, particularly when paired with the engine's seven main bearing bottom end. In order to further reinforce the engine's robustness, Ford implemented a thicker water pump shaft, a harmonic damper, a larger 6 quart oil sump as opposed to the standard 5 quart size, and heavy duty high predictive pistons. The key differentiator between the regular and heavy duty versions of the Ford 300 is found in the timing gears. Throughout its 31 year production span, the engine utilized fiber cam gears to reduce noise levels, with the industrial variants being the sole exception utilizing steel gears. While the fiber gears may require periodic replacement, the cast iron versions are known to injure for the engine's lifetime. These design features collectively contribute to the engine's reputation for being nearly indestructible, capable of withstanding even the most rigorous treatment. Despite various attempts to kill the engine, it has proven to be resilient and able to injure the harshest of conditions. The 4.9-litre engine designation was unveiled in 1978, followed by the integration of a microcomputer control unit MCU, and an OBD-1 diagnostics in 1981, marking a technological leap forward for the engine. However, it was in 1987 that the most noteworthy advancement was made with the introduction of electronic fuel injection and heightened compression ratio of 8.8 to 1. While the engine previously relied on a single and simple Carter carburetor, it was eventually replaced by a fuel injection system, although the engine entered the last stage of its lifespan. <laughs> The Ford 300 engine proved to be an extremely durable and reliable workhorse for a wide range of applications. Its uncomplicated design belied its impressive power output, while its fuel economy remained reasonable, varying between 15 to 25 mpg. With its ability to rack up 300,000 miles, the 300 engine has proven itself to be an impressive feat of gasoline engine engineering and it may well be one of the most dependable petrol engines in the world. If you find my work interesting, I would be very thankful if you support this channel through Patreon website. Feel free to share your opinion about the engine down below and see you in the next one. Cheers!